let's let's be spooky because it's Halloween time and we just Ooh. played a dreadful game. A dreadful game. The League of Game. Philosophers. Unscripted. Unedited. Video game podcasts. For you. Who enjoy. Blah. Blah. <laughs> Blah. <laughs> Special Metroid Dread Halloween episode. Yes. Yes. Here we are in the middle of October. It's not the middle. It's the late it's the October. It's the 24th. October. We've got Halloween <laughs> on Sunday. Yeah. And we just played through Metroid Dread, which was a wonderful little surprise. Um, I do I make think... a quick call out. Yeah, yeah. That we said at the end of the last episode that this would be a Mega Man episode. And because oh, of Metroid Dread, though, we're going to put that on hold for the next time. Yeah. But we're just going to have to. I'm still representing. <laughs> nice. I, I'm representing a hard drive schematic. So, you know, I, I could just Thanks. say that that applies to everything video games. Oh, there you but, go. Good. Yeah, Good. yeah. Yeah. I like that. But yeah, instead of Mega Man, yeah, maybe Metroid this time. Yeah. Um, it's another M video yeah. game, kind of yeah. jump and shoot. You know, it is true. It's classic. It has its roots, uh, and we've seen many iterations throughout the years. Uh, before we get into that, though, um, what have you been playing, my friend? <laughs> Metroid Dread. <laughs> 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 I mean, seriously, since 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 the last podcast, that's yeah. a bunch of what I've been doing. Um, what else have I been playing? What what other kind of retro stuff have I been doing? Um, oh, I got uh, Final Fantasy Adventure on Game Boy or Secret of Mana 1. Wow. And I never actually have played the Game Boy version. I played the Game Boy Advance remake. Um, and I, I think it had another like iOS remake that I haven't played, but I've never played the original. And so I've been kind of chipping through that here and there. I don't know. I'm probably about 25% through the game or so. It's fun. Yeah. It's old. Oh, my God. But it's still fun and it's still cl it's, it's clunky, but I love Game Boy shit. Like I love the Game Boy. And so I, I, I really am enjoying myself. I think it's great. Yeah. Nice. And so does, I'm trying to think, um, Secret of Mana, as we know it on the Super Nintendo, was that the original release of the series or did it start elsewhere or did it start there and then they did like a, a Gaiden version on the Game Boy and that's what you're No, playing? it started on the Game Boy. The Game Boy was the first one. That was the first very one. first one, yeah. yeah. And then Secret of Mana was Seeking Densensu 2 on the Super okay. NES and then Seeking Densensu 3. 3, yeah. Which that is Trials of Mana. Only. Yeah. yeah. And then Whoa. the awful PlayStation Legend of Mana, which I know it has its fans, but it's such an odd game. And then Dawn of Mana, yeah. PS2, which was also weird as fuck. Yeah, yeah, those games went in kind of strange directions. Yeah, they went really weird yeah. directions. Like the first three were like really great Zelda style action RPGs that differentiated themselves enough from Zelda. But then with the two PlayStation releases, they just got strange. And there was, I think the DS had a, a strategy game. And there just hasn't oh. been a pure uh, uh, action based RPG based on the Mana series that was an actual new, new release uh since the third one on the super famicom and that yeah, got that while. um it finally got translated in the collection of mana on the switch and then the trials of mana 3d remake uh that came out a couple years ago on pc xbox yeah, playstation it's pretty good i mean i'd rather mm -hmm. just play the original 2d i mean it's a straight up remake but yeah and and, and, and it looks good and everything but um yeah, as, as 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 far as a new game in the series, that have, there there really hasn't been anything. Yeah. So does the GBA ones still have like uh, all the recognizable uh, like bones of the games? Like, does it have the item wheel that pops up and stuff like that? No, that was uh, that started with uh, Secret of Man on on on, oh, okay. on the Super NES. The the Game Boy Final Fantasy Adventure or Seeking Sensei One is because there's only two buttons. <laughs> Right. Yeah. So you have one button is your action button and your other button is your item button and your item button. Every time you want to change your item, whether it would be a key or uh, a healing item or something like that, you have to assign it to the B button. Hmm. 
and then you have to use it with the B button. If it's a consumable item, you use it with the B button and then it's like, well, then you don't have anything else equipped. So then you got to go back into the start menu. Then you got to go back into the item menu. Then you got to pick another thing. Yeah. So it's a little tedious and not as quick to switch like the, the wheel menu was still a revelation. I don't know why games don't ape that nowadays. <laughs> it, mm -hmm. was, it was so intuitive. It's still so intuitive. Yeah, you know, it's funny thinking about the wheel system and that a lot of games really didn't use it a whole lot. Um, and I kind of forgot about it, but, you know, occasionally it will pop up or something. I will kind of use something like that. But then it wasn't until uh, Monster Hunter World came out because all the previous Monster Hunter games didn't have that radial wheel option, but mm -hmm. World did. And I well, used right, that right. so yep. much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and love that it was customizable. I think that's, it's one, it's like effective and it's a really useful way to be able to bring up a quick wheel and select an item mm -hmm. um, and it eliminates menus that allows you to stay in the game. And those are all really good things. But another thing that I really enjoy about it is that it's actually just fun to use. Yeah. Like it mm -hmm. feels like a bit of a skill-based mechanic, you know, to know that your, you know, potion or your flash bomb or something is on one side or the other. And you give just a, a quick flick in between attacks to be able to, mm -hmm. you know, smoothly transition your items and whatnot um yeah. all while staying you know in game and you know fighting an enemy that's that's a cool feeling to me i like that mm -hmm. yeah and, agreed. Uh, yeah all going back to, to secret of mana outside of that uh oh yeah and uh uh i almost said xeno gears xeno crisis, xeno crisis. <laughs> yeah <laughs> on uh, neo geo aes i got my uh home cart of, of of xeno crisis after two years after it's already been on all the genesis <laughs> but it's it's fantastic um the the community quickly found out that there is a uh uh, uh it's, it's not really a glitch but basically, the Neo Geo, in order to have pretty high May cartridges, uses this technique called bank switching, where it switches the memory bank on the fly in order to access more information. And there is a problem with one of the banks in the music. So the music is only comes out uh, through left mono audio. Oh, okay. But the second the community found out about it, there was one of the guys on, on the Neo forums that immediately contacted the, the developer, and the developer's like, Oh shit, are you serious? And they have been working tirelessly day and night to figure out what the problem is, where the problem is. They figured out what the problem is. It was a bank switching problem. So there's a really quick memory patch that people that have a, uni, uh, a, a uh, Unibios can put in at the beginning of the game, which takes literally five seconds once you know what you're doing. That's cool. um, but they're also organizing a fix for this first production run of cartridges. Now this has affected both the AES and the MVS versions. The MVS mm. versions though, there's uh, even more problems that they've identified that are board specific because there's so many different revisions of the MVS boards. Oh man. Uh, so they're still working some of those things out, but for the sound fix, especially for the AES carts, uh, there's a uh, vendor over here in the U.S. that they're probably going to be working with and one over in Western Europe because they're based in the U.K. Uh, where you can send your cart to and they're just going to do like a ROM switch and fix the little thing that needs fixed and they'll send it back and they're going to pay for everything, pay for shipping and all that's that. That's cool. So, yeah. yeah. They're really taking care of their customers. So that's, yeah. that's great. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's like a manual patch, like literally sending the cart out. Right. How cool though. Yeah, yeah. I've uh, I've been playing around with that, uh, just the Mega Drive version. Um, and I've only uh, sat down with it once so far, but just ran through uh, all my continues. And uh, I was surprised at how fun it was. When I saw yeah. the videos, um, I was expecting something a little bit more mindless, a little bit more like Smash TV, um, still totally fun to play, but actually playing it. Uh, one, I was struck by how many um, like Alien, uh, like Ridley Scott, style mm -hmm. references yeah. are in there yeah. like there's so much like like giger kind of influences with how the aliens are designed uh the marines themselves and kind of the setup to it mm -hmm. um the enemy variety is a lot of fun uh i like that there's like different things that are introduced to you that kind of throw off your timing and your overall strategy yeah. whether it be little bombs that are going to pop up and force you to move out of your situation um or you might have zombies that you kill them once then they come back and then they start moving at you even faster um or certain xenomorphs that are going to like hang out and take pot shots at you mm -hmm. and, and so forth um and then uh i was totally surprised that the ammo for your main 
fucking machine gun runs out, but it's technically like infinite. Like it's going to put a new, you know, ammo power up randomly somewhere on the map for you. Uh, but this creates this sudden little moment of tension where you're running out of ammo and things are moving in at you and you have to quickly decide what's the easiest path to dodge roll through right. to get myself to the ammo and like i love it because all of a sudden uh one that that's a common um scene uh especially in the aliens the second movie where they're constantly fighting waves of aliens and ammo is a serious factor once the ammo runs out that's a very like oh shit moment mm -hmm. and this game this cute little version of like some sort of alien smash tv thing yeah. actually creates that kind of situation mm -hmm. uh which i i just find that like oh it just it tickles me <laughs> um but yeah so much fun uh, the push pull between the special weapons having unlimited ammo uh which is uh, like all of a sudden you don't have to worry about you know making an air playing a little bit more reserved but it encourages you to go whole ham um yeah. is super fun that that juxtaposition keeps the game feeling really fresh um like we mentioned the controls are pretty interesting i never played an eight-way shooter um that was trying to stick to just like you know three buttons in a d-pad mm -hmm. um and, and how to handle that because we've seen, you know, since like Time Soldiers back in the day, you know, an arcade game that originally had that little rotating stick to handle the eight-way element, where Akari Warriors and whatnot, the ports of those to home consoles always usually kind of stumble a little bit in trying to right. emulate that eight-way style. And it's so funny because here we are talking in 2021, where, you know, you could just use pretty much any controller that you could find has two analog sticks mm -hmm. but this game went out of its way to try to tackle the problem uh, or we'll say challenge of using a <laughs> yeah. classic controller yeah um, and its solution is that while you're holding down shot the other two buttons that normally would be your grenade or your dodge now pivot your shot you know 45 mm -hmm. degrees which is a little weird. We talked about this and how we have such a, a habit of holding down the shot button and pressing dodge from playing running right. guns and stuff that we keep uh, meaning to dodge and we pivot. So there's a little bit of having to rewire. Also throwing your grenade, like Metal Slug is really bad about that. Like I'll yeah. be like hammering on the shot button and I'll just throw, lob some grenades while I'm hammering on the shot button. Oh yeah. You can't yeah. do that. Uh -oh. You have to let go of your gun button. <laughs> it's like, oh God. Right. It's, it's totally like taking all this, 30 years, more than 30 years of muscle memory and just being like, yep. I need to learn something new, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's probably good brain work. You yeah, know, we're, yeah, we're actually yeah. doing something very healthy for our noggins right now. But it is tricky. Like, I keep tripping myself up and being like, ah, oh, I, I did it right. But dang, the con you know, mm -hmm. I, I, I got caught on the controls. Yep. Um, but that's that seems to be where the game is kind of leading itself, is it wants you to be a little precise and really choose your shots and stuff. I want you to be thoughtful. Yeah. Thoughtful. That's a yeah, good way. Really, really it. thoughtful about it. It's, yeah. it's, it's definitely an arcade style game, but it has its own flavor in that it's just as hard as an arcade game. But the control setup, things like that are really, really unique. Like you said, trying to figure out how to do this thing without throwing some sort of modern control solution on top of it, which is, of course, going to make the game easy, but it's not going to be the game that they want you to play by mapping the gun to just to, you know, moving around the second control stick. That that could have been an easy way out and it could have been a fun game, but that wasn't yeah. their aim. Yeah. And I like how they really stuck to their guns and <laughs> created the game that they wanted to create. And people really enjoy the game because of that. Not in spite of that, but mm -hmm. because of that. Yeah, yeah. That's it, it kind of reminds me of um, almost like the classic car market where people are paying, you know, money to get a, an old, you know, Nissan Skyline or something um, and they import it. And for the money that they're paying for it, they could get any other car that's going to drive faster, have a better engine, handle better. But that's not what it's about. It, it, it's about taking something from that era and enjoying it, constraints and all. Um, and they seem to kind of honor that, you know, they honor what it was to play, you know, a Genesis game in like 1995 or, or whenever this game <laughs> maybe would have released if it was part of like 93, 94, 93, 94. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, 
yeah, yeah, good stuff. I'm uh, I'm looking forward to playing that one uh, a bit more myself. Unless uh, you've been playing a lot of other stuff, I think that's a good segue to talk about Metroid Dread because yeah. it's very much kind of in that mold too. But right. is there so, anything else you've been playing well, before we get into that? Or uh, nothing we haven't talked about before. Playing more Guilty Gear, enjoying the new patch and stuff. But you know, we'll we'll get to that next time we talk about some fighting games and stuff. Yeah, I think we have a yeah. lot to say about Metroid Dread. Yeah, yeah. Starting with, uh, I will say, uh, I saw the initial trailer for this, and I was like, meh. Same. Mm, I think we talked meh. about it on here. Like, I just, Did we? Yeah. yeah, I just was not excited about it because I didn't like Samus Returns for a bunch of valid reasons. I still don't like it. And I traditionally, at outside of the first Castlevania Lords of Shadow, which I think is a good standalone action game. I don't think it makes a good Castlevania game, but it's a good action game. But outside of that, Mercury Steam, I have never didn't really enjoyed their games, especially yeah. the two follow-up Lords of Shadow games. Everything that they've done has just been like, okay, you got some ideas. It's got a strong start and then it just falls apart and it gets boring towards the end. Yeah. Or they kind of miss the, the uh, 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 point of what it is that they're making or remaking or refreshing, kind of like... Samus Returns, I felt missed the point of Metroid 2, whereas AM2R yeah. stepped in and really nailed it. Um, but Dread, they nailed it. Whether or not, I, I don't know how much input Nintendo had. I'm sure mm -hmm. plenty, but the producer for Metroid, I mean, he's produced every Metroid, I, th I think, since Fusion, and especially with Other M, which was a steaming pile of crap. Yeah. and uh, 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 Samus Returns and that Federation Force. Remember that a few years ago in 3DS? Right, yeah, yeah. That team-based shooter that had nothing to do with Metroid at all. Yeah, what a weird little offshoot, yeah. Right, uh, out, 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 outside of those, like he, he even hasn't been consistent. And so I'm like, what are we gonna get? Like, what is this gonna be? Like everyone's losing their mind, but even though I was probably being a little too cynical, I'm like, oh, we, we've been burned too many times in the past. I've been burned too many times in the past, not mm -hmm. just as a fan. Like I'm okay with doing new stuff, but the new stuff needs to fit inside of the established universe. And if it doesn't, it's going to yeah. be a hard pill to swallow for a 30, 40, you know, 30 some odd year fan. Yeah. You know, and they usually run into that problem, especially when you have an older game that was 2D based and then they're trying to bring it along to the, the 3D realm, right. you know, like the Castlevania games, like, they were fun enough in 3D, but I don't think anybody would really say, oh yeah, they nailed the Castlevania, the vibe and whatnot. Yeah. Like they often brought enough elements over that if you were a fan, um, you'd have a good time with it and maybe the base game is okay. But that's a, that's a really hard transition to make mm -hmm. for any developer. Um, and especially with Metroid, um, we have probably, I think, I think that the best jump from 2D to 3D for any established franchise, and that was from you know the original Metroid going into Prime. Um, Prime felt like a Metroid game. Yeah, it, it was freaking a magic magical to to play that game, and just constantly getting those little Metroid notes that would come through. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't just them saying, "Oh, here's a Chozo thing," or "Here's that enemy you remember," but the pacing, the level design, the approach to it, the aesthetic, everything just felt so perfectly like a Metroid game. And yeah. then on top of that, they were also kind of uh, Metroidvania. I feel like it's stupid to say that when you're talking about a Metroid game. Um, but uh yeah, they, they did so many smart things that were innovative for that game alone that other games later um, would use. Like, for instance, every time it would you jumped in the game, the camera would tilt down to make the right. platforming easier uh, and just, you know, more fluid. Things like that. Like, it was just so well done. Mm -hmm. So seeing, you know, a company who had kind of tripped a little bit on the Castlevania games and just created okay stuff. Um, seeing them now take on a Metroid game, I just felt like, eh, eh, I guess I'll check it out. And then I think by the time I saw the second trailer, they started introducing and showing enough gameplay concepts that yeah. 
started to look like, oh, okay, they, it seems like they they really did their homework. They buckled down on this. Um, mm-hmm. And I started getting kind of intrigued. And then as the release got closer, um, somewhere along the line, something clicked. And I was just like, okay, I'm in, I'm in. But even then, even then, being excited about the game and throwing down my $60, I still did not expect the game to be as good as it actually was. Mm-hmm. It blew me away. Yeah, yeah, same. Like after that second trailer, I'm like, all right, I'm in. Let me put my pre-order down. I put my pre-order down and I got it. And I remember firing it up and I even looked at Ryan and I was like, I am just prepared to be disappointed. Like, (laughs) yeah, that's, you know, I was just readying myself to be like, all right, it's an okay game. And an hour in, he's like, what do you think? And I'm like, still too early. Two hours in, he's like, what do you think? I'm like, unless something goes horribly awry in the next few hours, they fucking nailed it. Yeah. I I was like, this is great. The pacing is great. The music's great. The atmosphere is great. It has just enough story, but most of the story and everything you need to know is told through the gameplay and the pacing Mm -hmm. and the level design as it should be. Uh, The, the parry mechanic is yeah. For a few enemies, it's the best way to kill them early on, but it doesn't bog down the pacing you can do it when you're running actually for every single suit upgrade your running parry gets even stronger yeah which is a nice uh, little touch yeah that's yeah. really cool uh but you don't have to do that your beam and your missiles are always a option right right and they're legit viable right. uh it's not one of those things where like oh i could use it but it's going to be you know stupid to do that i should just right. sit here and wait for the parry like and it's one of those things where the game feel of a metroid game and the pacing as you're moving through a corridor dealing with Mm -hmm. the enemies um that that is so particular much like a castlevania game it has like a rhythm and a flow to it and if you mess that up um you you just diluted the game um on like the gameplay level um but yeah yeah same I, i was delighted to find that it felt and played like a metroid game and i didn't have to rely on that parry and i think the thing that 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 really gets me this might because I, I know you haven't played as much uh, like Zero Mission as I have. I played a lot yeah. of Zero Mission. Yeah, I played through it just the one time. Um, you're going to love it when you get back to it. Anyway, uh, uh, if you remember back to when, and we can talk about more about this in our next podcast, but when Mega Man 9 came out in 2008 and we mm-hmm. both got super into it and we both got good enough where there was even uh, uh, achievements you could get where you don't stop through the entire level. Like you just keep moving, right? Yeah. Zero mission and AM2R nail that. You never want to stop moving. Samus is always moving. And that's why I couldn't stand Samus Returns is because it's just that stupid parry. And so many other yeah. things just made her stop dead in her tracks. And then she would move. Then she stopped dead in her tracks for a while. Then she would move. And the last two Metroid games I really enjoyed, just she was constantly moving. There was always an option to keep her flowing, to keep the Mm -hmm. level design flowing. And that's what they nailed with Dread. No one's talking about this. It blows my mind. You can keep moving. You don't really ever have to stop. I mean, yeah, there's, you know, certain switches and stuff you got to do, but there's this flow to the game where she just has all the options she needs, especially as she gets more powerful, to just keep flowing through the levels, to run through the things. If she needs mm-hmm. to backtrack, it's quick to backtrack. Yeah. There's there's no yeah. stopping for enemies. You can charge up your weapon and you know uh, uh, do like that short screw attack, which is only one hit, but still it, it's 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 something. Yeah. Cool little addition to the game that when I saw that, um, and for those if anybody doesn't know what we're talking about, if you just once you get the charge shot, you can also jump, and it gives you one hit in the air as she's spinning. It's like a mini version of the screw attack. You can do that in Super um, Metroid as well. Oh, you can. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Um, I love that, that it's there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because ag- again, it makes it so that you can be a little bit more skill-based and that if you mm-hmm. know the bat is there, you've already seen this, you could go into it already right. charged, fly right through it. And again, yeah. it rewards a player who's aware of the enemy placement and the enemy like behavior, mm-hmm. which is so good. That That is a big part of why these games are fun. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. What did you think about um, some of the new uh, items that they introduced, like the storm missile, um, the spider magnet? Um... So 
I do have a problem with some of the item upgrades and especially when and where you get them in the game. Yeah, very different paced, right? Like getting the morph bombs so late in the game. Right, which yeah. I mean, I, I do like the, uh, the, the, the two little uh, sequence uh, breaks. Uh, yeah, to, to get the uh, grapple beam and the morph ball bombs early. Yeah. But like say getting, uh, what's that? missile where you can target a bunch of things What's storm missile again? storm missile yeah. yeah so like getting that you get that right at the end of the game you get the power bomb right at the end of the game yeah and it's like okay you know with the storm missile there's maybe five doors that you need to use that on but other than that unless you go back for a hundred percent and do that victory run at the end when mm -hmm. are you going to use that the power right. bomb same thing there's like right after you get the power bomb there's like two or three areas that require it yeah. But outside of that, everything else is optional. And yeah. they're 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 really neat additions or the storm web or these the 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 storm missile is a really neat addition. I I I I I wish that there you got it earlier so it would have given you a uh longer amount of time to get used to where you could use that and mm -hmm. how it would be applicable outside of just hitting these five switches to open a door situations. Yeah, yeah. And the power bomb. I mean, it was kind of the same in Zero Mission. You didn't get until the very, very end of the game. Um, and the game isn't set up to need the power bomb. But at the same time, like, well, do we even need the power bomb if you get it? Like, <laughs> right before you go meet the last yeah. boss? Like, it's so late. It's almost pointless. Right. And it, I feel like it is necessary to have the power bomb later in the game uh, because it almost works as like a universal screen scan and then it just blows out any bomb material that, you know, like it basically, in, especially in the older games, served as a way of like checking a room for secrets. Yeah. You just drop a power bomb. Um, and in this game, yeah, it's, it's at the very, very end. It almost just serves as like a final key to go fight the final boss, you know, right. to do the last bits. Um, I will say, I love the animation. I think it's really, it is really like cool, yeah. fucking intense. It's just like a nuclear bomb going off as yeah. it whitewashes the screen. And it doesn't just blow the material up like it would normally blow up, but it like disperses and shoots the mm -hmm. explosion exploded material off at an angle, which I think is really cool. Um, yeah. For the most part, that is something that I think is worth noting too, that at Mercury Steam, I think the visual effects for all the weapons are just mm -hmm. phenomenal. Yeah, I great. love Agreed. everything. I love the new sound for the morph bombs. Um, <laughs> yeah. It has like kind of a ch chink kind of sound um, instead of the little bloop sound um i love the new screw attack that really just looks like like a tesla coil going mm -hmm. nuts um all the bombs and the missiles have like a nice thud to it and the power bomb um is is awesome um the two things uh that i do like about both the power bomb um and the storm missile towards the end of the game is they have very specific uses um so with the power bomb uh in the final fights uh, you have the the big bad guy at the end, Ravenbeak or whatever. Um, spoilers? I mean, whatever. Um, you know he's going to be the last boss from the, when you start yeah, the game. So you're yeah. So so um, there's this point where he throws out this big giant floating orb that comes at you. Yeah. Um, and then the first cycle of the boss, you can hit it with four missiles, um, and you can blow it up, or you can just do a quick power bomb. Um, which is just a nice, easy way uh, to take it out, and it speeds things up. Um, but in his second cycle, he throws an even bigger, like giant sun version yeah. that you can't blow up, but you can use the power bomb that will take it out. So oh, that, really? Yeah, okay. Yeah, because cool. otherwise you have to do that I little bullet that. hell moment. Right. Yep, it actually takes it all the way out, and it gives you a little bit of life and missiles back. Oh, so, nice. Okay. That's that's pretty handy use. Um, and on the same side with the storm missiles, I didn't use them at all um, outside of opening doors, just like you. And they felt like kind of a, a pretty novelty. Like everybody loves that Macross kind of style, Panzer <laughs> yeah. Dragoon, multi-target, mm -hmm. send out all your ribbons of destruction. Um, right. Super fun. Uh, but yeah, when you use it for just doors, it was like, eh. Now what I found though, is especially in the boss fights, um, they specifically set up moments where you can't keep hitting the bosses with your missiles, like something will deflect and block right. it. And so I just started holding down R1 
which naturally charges up the storm missile so that the second they became hittable again, I would target and then launch a volley and then go back to just pounding them with the, mm -hmm. like the rhythmic missiles. And like, I felt like that actually added a little extra fun element to the boss fights. Mm -hmm. It made them a little bit more efficient to make use of those muscle missiles. Um, and it just kind of naturally found its way in. Um, I do wish it had a little bit more place, mm -hmm. but yeah. Now the spider magnet, um, that that's kind of peppered throughout the entire game. There's all sorts of little right. You get it early, you can use that. and yeah. then there's plenty of places to use it. There, I mean, you can't traverse yeah. most of the game without it. So, mm -hmm. I really like the way they work that in, and it's uh, a little bit more useful than like the spider ball, for example. Right. Yeah. And um, I just drank the last of my coffee, and I just got that muddy grit at the end. Uh -huh. Oof. Gross. Yeah. Um, yeah, with the uh, spider magnet, the other thing I really like about it is it actually slows down your pace as you're gripping yeah. your way up the walls. And the reason that's so effective is that there's plenty of spots where you're fighting the Emmys who are stalking you. Um, and all of a sudden you get this panic horror movie feeling of like almost like walking through, you know, like like having a nightmare and you, you can't run through the forest mm -hmm. and you're like moving through pudding. Uh, it's that kind of feeling where this Emmy is stalking you and working its way around and you're like just trying to get up over so you can run through the door. Like that's a really intense, cool moment that is basically providing a solution through an item, which is the spider magnet, but yep. then also creating a tension with the item and like almost screws you up. You almost wish like, oh, I wish I could move faster, but you're grateful for having the item because it is going to get you out of trouble as long as you can time it right. Mm -hmm. So it, it's this like quad, I was going to say trifecta, quadfecta, quadfecta, is that a word? Quintifecta? Sure. Quinta, sure. Um, there, there's like many different layered elements that are all coming through one little piece of game design. And I love the elegance and efficiency of creating anything like that. Um, so yeah, the more I reflect back on that, that spider magnet in particular, I think it's underrated on how much it actually accomplishes through its design. I really like to, once you get, especially if you get it early, the, the grapple beam, you can just yeah. zip right up to any of your spider magnet spots. So you can use that to just, you know, do, do all these zip things here and there and here and there and here and there. So you yeah. can just start zipping around the levels with the grapple beam which i thought was yeah. really cool because there's really only a couple spots where there's an actual like grapple beam hook but right. every other time you use it is the the spider magnet spots and mm -hmm. it makes that even faster so yeah. it's kind of like the next stage of the spider magnet you know yeah 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 exactly um and again very skill based mm -hmm. and uh and it also really really helps out with like the emmy zones um because especially when you're stuck in water <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah. There's the one the particular, couple. yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. And yeah. there's, there's one where you're like running two screens away. Emmy's right on your trail. And one of the best things you can do is just like Batman grapple, Zip hook up. yourself straight up and, and get yep. out. Yeah. Um, it took me forever to notice that that's even possible because the, <laughs> you know, the grapply spot is actually off screen. It's right. not until you do it the hard way that you even realize that it's mm -hmm. there which is another cool kind of little design element in itself. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to think what were, um, were there any other items or weapons? I feel like the beam progression was pretty standard. The beam progression was interesting. The wave beam you usually get earlier and the plasma beam you typically get later in Metroid games. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. Even though it was flip-flopped, still cool. Mm -hmm. um, I liked what they did with that. Um, one of the items that I really liked and I think the developers at Mercury Steam, after they published Samus Returns, and everyone's like, oh my God, it's a new Samus game. And then, but everyone's like, hey, but there's this fan game here over AM2R that is actually better. I'm not saying your game sucks, yeah, but yeah. they did it better. And I think they went back and they played that because they implemented some ideas that were introduced in AM2R. And if you haven't played AM2R, you're not going to notice them in this game. So one of them. Mm is Samus's ability to just volley over small uh, little jumps where instead of having mm -hmm. to do a full jump, she just puts her hand down and just leaps yeah. over it mid run. She That's does nice. that in AM2R. You have to yeah. press a button with it, but it's fine. She just does a quick volley, puts her hand down and does, does, does a quick volley over. But the other one is uh, if you 
hold down the charge beam in AM2R, and then you go into your ball, typically it would just scatter your bombs everywhere. But in AM2R, if you like hold down with it, it'll throw five bombs up in a row and then it power bombs her up this way. Uh, or it'll okay. do that across too. So there's the one power up in Dread, I forget what it's called, but it basically does that. It gives you a cross bomb. Yeah, the, the, cross, uh, bomb. the uh, cross bomb, yeah. yeah. And it does the same thing. It can push her up, it can push her left or right. It can yeah. do all this stuff. It was an AM2R. I, That's you cool. know, I can't yeah. say that hey, they ape this from this fan game. And if they did, awesome. I'm glad they did. Yeah, it's yeah, a great yeah. idea. That's another one of the things, though, that I really, really like in the game, but you get that a little too late. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, I would have loved this earlier in the game. Mm -hmm. There's just some of the best ways to get around the world. You get a, just a little too late. Yeah. I got to say, though, I do like um, some of the more inventive ways that they did use some of these new items. And um Maybe, maybe games like AM2R actually did this, but uh, it was new to me, uh, such as using the cross bomb to actually quickly launch yourself yeah. horizontally to get over multiple pitfall blocks, yep. which are usually like a non-starter, you know? Right. Um, some neat stuff like that. Um, also, what did you think about using um, like the, uh, what's, what's the tri-beam called where it splits it into three? Oh, what um, do they call that? In Metroid 2, they call it the the uh, the, the spazzer beam. Spazzer. Spazzer beam. What did they call yeah. this one? I don't know, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Right. Um, but now they had special doors that had to be mm -hmm. hit, um, you know, to light up all three, uh, as well as like you could charge and move like a big block yeah. out of the way. Um, they were small touches, but I liked that there was a little bit more utility to them. Mm -hmm. um, because it kind of scratches that part of my brain that like remembers where that thing is to go back to it. Um, and again, uh, plays into the, the Emmy sections really well, because I'm sure you ran into this as well, where you finally outmaneuver an Emmy and you're like, okay, I know I'm going into the upper right somewhere, but it's kind of panicky and you're just booking it and you finally get there, Emmy's on your heels. And then you're like, oh shit, I got to charge up my beam to get through this door. Uh -huh. um, and if you didn't have it charged already, you know, maybe that's exactly where you get caught by the Emmy. Right. Um, but again, it creates a awesome little moments of tension just purely mm -hmm. through game design, which was pretty cool. Um, yeah, I, I think that those were most of them. Um, I got to say, um, I really liked the shine spark in this game. Mm -hmm. um, some of those shine star spark puzzles, uh, were nutty. I figured out, because there's there's probably like seven or eight of them um, in the game, uh, and I figured out probably five of them. And then the other three, like I just looked up a guide to see how somebody else did it. Yeah. Because they are intense. There are. Um, yeah. And it's like, once you see what's possible, it's easier to start sussing out how to potentially tackle it. But for the most part, like they, they are just like, they're like execution challenges. It almost makes me, gives me the same feeling of like doing a fighting game trial mm. where eventually like, okay, I got to run through here um, because I can take the running momentum. And as long as I bounce off of the walls, it'll continue charging yeah. um, with the speed booster. And then, uh, you know, storing it for five seconds as I quickly climb up something, turn into a morph ball, angle it, and then shoot myself mm -hmm. off to hit this particular thing. So satisfying to actually hit that though. And yeah. what I loved too is one, the little shine spark puzzles, um, they force you to get really good at using the shine spark yeah. because they all work in a different way yeah. that challenges um, you either holding the charge and getting the timing of that five seconds before it disappears and really mm -hmm. pushing it to that limit um, or getting you used to doing the wall bounces uh, in several different ways. But the beautiful thing is that if you get those down, you can use those to go into the boss fights um, and you can take out boss fights really quickly. Like almost all of the Chozo soldiers, mm -hmm. if you do it right, you can take the speed booster and right as you go into the fight, Chozo soldier comes out and he's like, Mrah! and you're just like, Bam! <laughs> <laughs> no, you, I didn't you, know that. Okay, that makes sense yeah, though. You, you'll take off a third of their life uh, before the fight even starts. All right, awesome. Um, same thing with uh, the core units, those little Metroid, uh, yeah. or I mean, mother brain looking things. Um, I would say half of those, you can run in with a charged shine spark, fight starts and you just 
headbutt the ever living shit out of them and then turn them into the brain form and just melt them in seconds. Immediately. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Really, really nice little speed run kind of element in there. Which was, and I was go on. I was going to say that was another thing that, that surprised me about the game is uh, I am notorious for not finishing games. Um, I just want to play everything and experience it. And I often just, uh, same, you know, same. once, I, once yeah. I got it, we've, we yeah. talked about this a lot, but um, not only did I finish this game, um, I relished it and enjoyed every moment of it, especially as I, I got closer and closer to the end. I was just as locked into this game and enjoying it um, as I was in the beginning. Uh, was just thrilled about it all the way up to the, the very awesome climatic ending. Mm -hmm. um, but then I turned around and I played it again. And I actually was like, all right, now I'm going to do this briskly. I cannot remember the last time that I finished a game and within 24 hours, I started a new game and started mm -hmm. playing it again. I, I cannot even name one off the top of my head. That wow. is so unlike me. Uh, Same. The last game yeah. that I remember doing that with was Mega Man 11. I oh, beat okay. it and yeah. then I went back to try to beat my time. And yeah. I did by hours, hours and hours. Same with Metroid yeah. Dread. But yeah, typically it's a good 2D game that'll get me to do that. Mm -hmm. um, but a a 3D games, especially like longer games, I know that's <laughs> that's not going to happen. Yeah. I'm not going to jump yeah. back into a new game plus for Persona 5 anytime soon. <laughs> oh my gosh, I don't yeah. have another yeah. 80, 100 hours to <laughs> spend on that. Yeah, yeah. And you know, partly what, what got me so excited about it was to see um, how elegant the game design was when you first play through and yeah. everything starts to unravel in front of you. Um, that now that you got it, it's super exciting to go back and be like, oh, now what does it feel like to drive through the entire game now that I'm much better at piloting Samus and I understand right. how all the pieces and parts come together. And my second playthrough, as I essentially tried to speed run it, um, really became a very different experience. Mm -hmm. One, um, because I was hauling ass, I got confused and lost for totally different reasons, mm -hmm. um, where in the my initial playthrough, I was being much more studious about paying attention to the walls and trying to make notes of where everything yeah. was. And like when you start speed running it, all of a sudden this very large complex world becomes a little bit more confusing and it kind of checks you. And it's like, you don't know this game as well as you think you know. And yeah. I often found myself You've only been through going, one time. It's going to yeah. take a few times to get to the point where you feel super comfortable. Right, yeah. Because I ended up just ending up in, in places that are off on the wrong side of the map and, yeah. and whatnot. Um, so that was, a, that was a nice little check. Um, and also because when you're speed running it, you're skipping um, all of the extra uh, energy power-ups and stuff and really just trying to stay on the main track. Right. So it, you end up being kind of underpowered um, and you're a lot more delicate going through the game. So it essentially creates a harder version of the game yeah. as, as you start kind of flying right through it. And now that I beat it twice, my initial time to 100% it um, was like 11 hours or something like that. Oh, and 100% it was, was oddly fun too. The game does a really good job of giving you the tools to suss out what, because I thought it was going to be me walking through every room and scanning every single room. Mm -hmm. Now I did scan a lot, but it wasn't actually that. I was really able just to look at the map, to use the highlighted pulsing areas, and then to figure out different little pieces and parts of the map that haven't been explored. Mm -hmm. um, and it generally always led me there. There were very, very few times that I was ever like, huh, I'm not sure even where to go. Yeah. Um, pretty much every map, um, which conveniently tells you how close you are to 100%ing that specific area, mm -hmm. um, I always kind of could figure out where to go, which made good doing the victory run um, a, a lot more relaxed and fun than sure. I expected. But yeah, and then my my second time through, I think it did it in uh, like, like four hours and 40 minutes or something like mm -hmm. that. And I can't believe I'm not done with the game. I, I want to play through it again. Yeah, I want to do it again. I want to try to get that that sub four hour time now. Then I want to maybe do a three hour time. And I've never gotten to speed running and stuff. Not really, but like I kind of want to look up some guides and like mm -hmm. really figure out how to to flow right through this. Um, it just plays like a dream. It is just such an enjoyable experience to play. It really is. Um, so backtrack real quick. I just mm -hmm. want to make one comment about the Shine Spark. When you go back and you revisit Zero Mission. And especially AM2R, 
you're going to have lots of fun with the shine spark. Oh yeah. Zero mission is where they really started all the shine spark puzzles and there's tons in there, but cool. AM two R is a fan game and they know yeah. what people like about Metroid. That's what makes AM two R so good. It's a game made by fans for fans of that, not just the Metroidvania genre, but of mm -hmm. Metroid itself. And so there is a lots of fun ways to use the shine spark in AM2R. You're going to love the fuck out of that. Nice. Um, one thing that I really, really have enjoyed about Dread and something that I also had enjoyed about Zero Mission, especially, uh, is the animation cycle. Samus's yeah. animation cycle is spot on perfect in a mm -hmm. way that I didn't think Mercury Steam, especially after Samus Returns, was going to be able to nail. Not only is she fast, snappy, and responsive, even with analog control, yeah. all the animation transitions always flow perfectly to the next one. There's not one part where it looks like this like weird janky animation transition. Everything yeah. is fluid. The way that she moves her arms, the way that she stops, the way that she turns, the way that she jumps, all the little ways that they moved her feet in order mm -hmm. to show the maximum amount of weight and momentum for every single thing that she's doing. It is a masterclass in 2D animation work and other developers should really pay attention. That yeah. floored me from the beginning of the game. I was like, whoa, yeah, this is a level above what I'm used to seeing in 2D games, even in 2021. I was yeah. I'm very impressed with the animation cycle. I'm so glad you mentioned that too, because that was one of the things that uh, I noticed right off the bat that there was um, just an extra fluidity to everything. And like, Samus is just, like you said, masterclass. Um, but even like the smaller enemies, you watch the bats before yeah. they die bomb and stuff. They have so many little details on how mm -hmm. they change and move. And, and it's all pulled from classic um, 2D um, animation cycles. Yeah. Like, like, you know, creating that tension before the push and then the release. Um, it, it's really all there if you watch it slowly. And on top of that, um, they have all sorts of small um, little bits of animation that they didn't have to do, but yeah. they did anyway. Like, I love that when you run Samus up to a wall, she'll lean up against the yeah. wall. And put a hand And if you on shoot, it. Yeah, yeah. she'll even like put her gun up and shoot a few times. Uh -huh. um, little bits like that yeah. actually add a lot of personality to her and just add this kind of low level of joy that just starts kind of building up. And then when you see some of like the um, little cutscenes before bosses, um, now you're kind of primed with a, all of the, the little body language of Samus so that when she does something especially badass, like, like you know, charging up a shot and right. doing the, the fadeaway shot or, or whatever it might be, it communicates a lot more. Like you can almost see her like, oh, I'm so done with this resentment <laughs> towards Kraid, you know? Yeah. Um, or her, how dare you fuck with me uh, against the first boss as she basically like jumps through the circle of the tail as she rips them in half. Um, so much good stuff like that, that especially when you're dealing with the silent protagonist, the animation um, and the body language, yeah. um, that becomes your dialogue. And Mercury Steam seemed to really recognize that, uh, which was just awesome. So we've talked about the items, we've talked about the level design, we've talked about the animation, the music is fine. Um, it's not the best Metroid soundtrack, but it's 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 fine. It fits. Yeah, yeah. Um, but let's talk a little bit about the reception to the game. Mm -hmm. I've I've I have been very interested in the varying perspectives and opinions that I have seen on this game. I have seen you know a uh, 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 plenty plenty of people be like, oh, this is a ten out of ten. No, it's not. It's not a perfect game. Yeah. Um, that's like those, those same people are like, oh my God, Persona 5 is a 10 out of 10. No, it's not. It's a fantastic game. I believe yeah. it's a masterpiece, but it's not perfect because there's all these problems I had with it. I wouldn't say it's a 10 out of 10 game. Yeah, yeah. Maybe an 8, 8.5 or a 9 out of 10 if I wanted to put a number to Metroid Dread without actually reviewing it myself. But mm -hmm. that said, uh, we've had people like David Jaffe, the creator of God of War, you know, go on those, uh, 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 Twitch tirades where he's yeah. he's 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 stuck in the room and there's so, plenty of people around YouTube that are like having so much fun with that but yeah. there's 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 also legit some people that have gotten into the game and they're like oh this is too hard or I don't know where mm -hmm. to go 
and these are people that are new to Metroid. Maybe yeah. not new to Metroidvanias because they're a dime a dozen nowadays, but are new, they're new to Metroid. Mm -hmm. So what's your yeah. perspective on some of this and these, these varying opinions and perspectives with a very successful Metroid game? This is probably the yeah. most successful Metroid game ever at this I, point. Yeah, I looked it up. Yeah, and it is the best-selling Metroid game ever in history. Right, already. so, it's, so it's, yeah. it's, it's hitting a much more broad audience than mm -hmm. us geeks that have been with it you know, since, since day one. So what is, what is, it's, what is your, it's so your true. Take? I think I think the first thing that needs to be said is Metroid Dread is legit hard. Um, I I don't care how good of a gamer you are, you're gonna die. Uh, yeah. This game will check you, uh, yeah. and for all the good reasons, um, mm -hmm. in in a really good way, um, in that it's yeah. fair. Every single death will teach you a little bit of something as long as you're willing to learn. And I think that probably highlights the first little problem that some people are running into is they just didn't realize that this is a game where they have to be willing to learn. Um, it's not a run and gun action game. It's not mindless at all. Right. Um, and this is a game that will reward you if you are willing to be educated to all of mm -hmm. its subtleties. Um, and I got to admit, uh, I wasn't super familiar with, uh, with who Jaffe was. So I saw that. <laughs> that was kind of funny when you YouTube sent me that video. video and you didn't know who it was. I, was I had like, a lot oh. more empathy because I was like, <laughs> oh, who's this dude uh, who's just struggling with the game? Um, and people were making a good point because they were, he was just missing um, how the game design was trying to lead him in a direction. And I get it. There, there's many times where in the game I got stuck myself and I was looking around. I'm like, ah, oh, what is the game trying to show me? Um, but that's a little bit of a difference. When I get stuck in those moments, um, I just change my mindset and it's fun. I'm like, okay, the game is showing me something, but I haven't figured it out yet. You know, right. it suddenly becomes this kind of riddle mindset. Um, but yeah, and I, I saw a bunch of people replaying the clips of other Twitch streamers working through the exact same portion and how quickly <laughs> they got funny, it. Yeah. And, I, and it honestly felt a little bit cruel a little a little harsh and then you told me that he was the lead game designer for a game of war god of war and or god of war and then he continued to shit on the game's design and started talking about how it was inexcusable and like oh lordy no and even him that, coming back with that second round being like look at all these places you can go no, you can't. <laughs> yeah. It's the only way to go. It is the only yeah. solution. The right. only way to move forward. Literally right. the only way to move forward. The game will not right. let you move yeah. forward at that point. It's too, and, it, and it's really early in the game. Right. And it, and it does it through creative <laughs> ways that makes you still feel like you're exploring around. Right. But, but there's little hard stuck areas um, that, that keep you on track. Um, and I found it appalling that a lead game designer wouldn't recognize really creative game design. And I was just like, no, I, I felt so sorry at first. And then once I learned that, I was yeah. like, mm -mm. and that's no, sir. <laughs> like what, 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 what blew my mind about that is okay, fine. Like apparently how you design games is very different. Apparently it is because I've never liked a God of war game. Not one of them. They're really designs it by saying you need to have flashcards for the player right. to follow along with. Like, no, you don't. But anyway, okay, that's another thing. But I'm like, I'm like, this is this is a Metroid game. This is as yeah. pure of a Metroid game as has been mm -hmm. since 2004 when yeah. Zero Mission came out. Mm. There hasn't been a pure, well, outside of AM2R, but that's its own thing because even Samus Returns really, really, really missed the mark on a lot of things. Like this is a pure Metroid game, just yeah. like Super Metroid. It, felt, it, it feels like Fusion. It feels like uh, Zero Mission. And, it feels like the opposite of Other M. Right, exactly. <laughs> and so the, the, the cleverness of the actual levered, lever, level design shows yeah. you what you need to do. When you're stuck, yeah. there's a solution. And if you've been playing Metroid games for as long as they've been around, you know that when you're stuck in a Metroid game, you're not actually stuck. It's, it's exactly mm -hmm. what you said. There's something in the game showing you that you haven't paid attention to yet. Yeah. Yep. They're, and once you find lessons. it, it's, 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 you're, you're not frustrated. Once you find it, you're like, oh, oh, okay. Yeah. And that's what I liked about that one uh, a response video that, that you sent me of like the, the different, you know, Twitch streamers, like Maximilian dude and, you know, people like that watching. And once they figured out the room, they were like, Oh, oh, okay. Every single mm -hmm. one of them said that. They were like, oh, okay. They weren't frustrated. 
Right. They were just like, oh, it's a Metroid game. Like, okay, right. this makes sense. That's where it was supposed to go. I shot yeah. this enemy on the ceiling. Guess what? One of my stray sots uh, blew away one of the bricks. Oh, apparently right. that's the way I'm supposed to go because I haven't done that yet. And, and it's why, so cool. why, why are there enemies up there if you can't yeah. get up there? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. And each time you stumble across one of those, it has almost the same significance and the same kind of gratifying feeling as like getting a new weapon mm -hmm. uh, or item that's going to allow you to traverse more or, or you know, because you now know, oh, the game is showing me yeah. that I can do this with these certain walls mm -hmm. or I should approach things like this. Um, and that just opens it up. You, you literally get a new verb in your, your vocabulary. Mm -hmm. It gives you a new tool in your tool belt. Um, and that, that should be embraced. That, that is not game, bad game design. Goodness, no. Right, um, no. It, it is one of the, the principal candles in Metroid's menorah. Okay, I don't know. Sure. <laughs> Does that work? I don't, I'm sure. not even sure. <laughs> I'm not Jewish, but sure. <laughs> But yeah, yeah. And, you know, uh, I'm a little concerned too that, hey, maybe people um, who haven't grown up playing all the Metroid games um, won't get that and they'll kind of face plant. But, you know, it, it's designed so well that, like, if you face plant and you put it down and you don't go back to it, like, don't worry about it. It's probably just not for you. Um, and maybe you'll return to it later. I bet that happened a lot with the original Metroid and with Super Metroid. That mm -hmm. like people went into it, it looked kind of like Contra. It had a, a space genie with a gun. Um, <laughs> but you know, once you start playing it, like especially if you were kind of a, a super young kid, you know, maybe it wasn't until you you came back four years later and you're you're 12 years old right. and now you're playing Super Metroid mm -hmm. and you're like, oh, I see, this is different. You know, mm -hmm. this is a a lonesome game of exploration. Right. So, you know, I, I I don't think the game should uh, really pull any punches in that that sense. Like. It, it delivers in its game design and it does mm -hmm. it thoroughly. Um, it is unfortunate, you know, like some people are going to bounce off of it for that reason, but that's okay. I mean, it, it's just, it's not for everybody. Right. And not every single video game is going to be for everybody. Totally. Just yeah. because it's not for you doesn't make its design bad. Dread is yes. the most consistently consistent Metroid game in 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. Official Metroid game in 20 years. It did. Yeah. It, it really feels like such a core entry. Like it does Metroid better than a lot of other previous Metroid games, yeah. um, which is just delightful. Delightful. Yeah. It's great. It's great. Yeah. The, 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 this isn't a criticism that I have of the game, but I think outside of your first couple like run-ins with the Emmys, um, <laughs> it's like they're going to get some sort of award. Here's your Emmy. Your Emmy. Um, <laughs> uh, 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 outside of that, though, the I found the mechanic of the SAX in Fusion mm -hmm. actually more unnerving oh, yeah. than the Emmys, only because the Emmys became such a normal part of the gameplay. Mm -hmm. And you died so many times true. trying to figure out how to get through that yeah. eventually the dread wears off and it just becomes another part of the exploration and the adventure. Mm -hmm. And so you, your, your heart stops pounding and things like that. Once you, you know, die on your fifth time trying to figure out how to get through the Emmy zone. Whereas the SAX and fusion, you didn't really have that when you died one, you went back to the last save point, which could have been right. a little while away. Yeah, yeah, you gotta work. But for it. it was also really creepy, like mm -hmm. really, really creepy, because it wasn't a consistent thing that happened. It wasn't a core part of the gameplay loop and experience. There were just these right. few scripted times, and a couple times where you had to like try to run and get away from her because mm -hmm. three shots were gonna kill you. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I found that the SAX and even uh, uh, Dark Samus and Prime Two, those encounters were even more. Uh, 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 dread filled than the yeah. Emmys and dread. So while I enjoy the the aesthetic and I enjoy what the Emmys brought, and I do think that dread is a apt name for the game because it, it it is a core part of it to always feel like there's something following you and something more mm -hmm. powerful than you always following you. 
Yeah. Um, I had probably more tension the first time I went through the uh, back half of Zero Mission, even when you were mm -hmm. Zero Suit Samus. Yeah. And yeah, a couple yeah. hits were going to kill you because you, you were completely naked, basically, except your blue suit. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know, I think that's a really good point. And I generally agree with you. I will say that I think Dread. Um, did a really good job of introducing a more interactive way of creating this uh, almost horror movie moment. Um, and there was a lot more back and forth of you playing around the Emmy yeah. um, that it, any of the other games did with their more um, suspenseful sequences. Um, however, especially in Fusion, um, I totally agree that SAX felt like a scarier, more intimidating, larger threat uh, mm -hmm. and how it was portrayed through the gameplay was just phenomenal. I think yeah. my very favorite moment in Fusion is probably in the last three quarters of the game. And there's a moment after you've had a couple of encounters with SAX already. Um, and there's this moment where you're basically pushing to the left of the screen um, and SAX is coming this way and she's like patrolling and kind of locking yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. And you have to drop a power bomb in order to keep going to the left. But in yeah. doing so, you're gonna alert SAX and she's gonna tear ass and try to kill you. Right. And that moment of making the player pull the switch on their own hunt in terror is brilliant. <laughs> yeah, it's brilliant, yeah. And they did it in a Game Boy game. Right. Like, amazing. Yeah. yeah. It was so, so good. Yeah, that was hands down, probably one of my more favorite Metroid mm -hmm. moments, period. Mm -hmm. um, and it's exactly to your point that uh, when done really, really well, that that high that it hits, yeah. I think stands alone. I, I think I don't think Dread actually hit that kind of crescendo, um, but it had a lot of really good uh, moments in itself. It probably right. had more continuous good dreadful moments, I'd say. Sure. But the, that the highs that some of the other games hit. Yeah. You um, learn to don't, don't quite get them. reached. In you dread, do. because you again, do. it's that yeah. core part of the gameplay loop. You learn to expect those Emmy battles. Whereas yeah. the first time you see that SA actually, like, oh shit. And you have no idea when it's going to come up again because she's not a thing that you have to continually beat to get me like, like new items or anything. It's just when yeah. she comes on the screen, you have to run. There's, right. there's, there's no uh, uh, core that you have to beat in order to, you know, go back and be able to kill. You have to run because you're going to die. It's like meeting Ravenbeak. Say if Ravenbeak met you at all those times throughout the thing, like you were going to die. You know, yeah. Speaking, yeah. speaking, speaking of that, let me talk about Adam really quick. I know we've been going for two hours, but I need to talk about <laughs> Adam the computer. Yes. Yeah. Can we, like Nintendo, do we need this disembodied voice in your games telling the player what the player has already figured out? Do we continue to need this? Like yeah. there is that example that I gave you when you got the cloaking ability, you mm -hmm. get the cloak, the game tells you in a text screen what to do with the cloak. Then you get to the next Emmy thing. It tells you again what to do with the cloak and shows you how to use it and gives you an opportunity to use it. Then you yeah. get to your next Adam screen and then he tells you all over again what you already know, along with telling you for the umpteenth millionth time that you're not powerful enough to beat Ravenbeak yet. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. I probably have hours in front of me before I'm able to do that. I, as a player, yeah. have gathered that information. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. he beat me at the beginning of the game. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't need that. I don't need mm -hmm. you to hold my hand through this when the gameplay already told me everything I need to know. Yeah. I hate yeah. that. I hate it. I hate it. Yeah. Totally. Totally. forward a little bit but unfortunately it doesn't actually use that time to say much about the plot itself yeah um instead it just kind of like you said reiterates what we already know um and continues just to paint the same kind of picture i i would have like i don't mind that it's there i think it kind of breaks up the timing and the pacing uh in kind of a way that gives you a, a brief reprieve from what you've been doing. Um, and it's also useful to get you back on track. Like, cause there are a few times where he's like, hey, the reactor, you need to go do this and this right. to settle it. Or when cool. the planet cooled. Little, and yeah, exactly. You're like, hey, you need to stop doing what you're doing and go mm -hmm. warm back up the planet. There's, there's something cooling the planet. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And th that's useful. Give me, give me just a little bit of right. direction without holding my hand. Awesome. That's a good use of it. Kind of like infusion. That mm -hmm. makes sense. Yeah. But all of the extra times where that's not happening um, and they're just reiterating, um, it does. It feels like a, like a missed opportunity. Yeah, and so that's, that's again, I'm not an where, idiot. Like, I get yeah, it. <laughs> yeah. And, that, and that's, that's again, that's, that's where the game's not a 10 out of 10. It's right. a great game. It's probably right up there with my game of the year so far. It might just be, um, I, I feel pretty confident about that, but it's okay that it's not perfect. Like, yeah. and it's okay to acknowledge like, yeah, you know, that, that could have been a, a missed opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, that kind of brings me to my, my last kind of thought here is, uh, you know, what do we want going forward? Because right now I am so impressed with what Mercury's team did. I would love if they maybe created a trilogy out of this or at least built on it and kept going forward because they, they just seemed to, to hit such a good stride with this. I hope it's not a, a one and done. And I also hope that it doesn't become a quick watered down kind of thing where it's like, oh, they loved it. Let's pump out two more. And it becomes kind of like Prime where the first one was great. And then the second and third were happy to have them, but you know, they they've definitely didn't have the same kind of polish and thoughtful design that the first one did. I, I was kind of thinking about the same thing. Like where where do I want Nintendo to take Metroid after this? I mean, one, we, 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 we know that Prime 4 is on the horizon. So there's another first person. Mm you know, game for yeah. people that like that form of Metroid, which we all know Metroid Prime is one of my top 10 favorite games of all time. Yeah, it's so good, yeah, so same. good. Um, but I didn't like the second or the third one. Actually, I've, I've never even beat the third one because I hated it, actually. Um, yeah. The second one I liked, okay, but it wasn't as polished as the first, like you said. For Dread, I am, I'm, I feel pretty confident that Nintendo probably won't try to milk it and milk the success of this. I mean, yeah. every single mainline Mario game and Zelda game is a, you know, quadruple million seller and you only see one every four to five years, right? So right. I don't think we're going to see Nintendo letting Mercury Steam milk Samus, you know, because it was mm -hmm. what, 20, 2017 is when Samus Returns came out. So it's four years, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't think we're, 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 we're going to run into a watered down 2D yearly installment of, of Metroid, which mm -hmm. I'm glad because Nintendo has the reins. If this was like EA or somebody like that, they're going to milk the fuck out of that shit. They're going to make oh, you yeah. hate Samus by the end of the third year, right? Um, Morph ball loot boxes. Sorry. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> my God. So, I mean, that's, that's cool. And I'm, I'm, Glad this is a Nintendo property that they're not going to ruin with yearly installments. Um, yeah. It does make me kind of worried about Metroid Prime 4 because mm. we already know there's not a lot to know about it, but we know it's had some trouble development. The team that was originally working on it, they were pulled off of it. They rebooted the project and gave it back over to uh, 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 Retro Studios. And oh, even whoa, though, whoa, 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 I didn't know that Retro oh, Studios yeah. is doing it now. Yeah. Great. I'm like 98% oh sure. Double check me on that, but I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Wow. Oh, because my kind of lukewarm hesitation was that Retro Studios wasn't doing it. Let me um, look. That's why we have the internet. <laughs> Yeah, uh, January 20 or yeah, January 25th, 2019. Uh, okay. Whoever was working on it, they pulled it from them and restarted the project at Retro Studios. Very cool. Very so cool. So it'll be yeah. three years in January since they made this announcement. So Oof. we yeah. know it's coming. Yeah. But what I don't want to have happen is for the success of dread to place unrealistic expectations on what Metroid prime four mm -hmm. is and can be, and should be the prime sub series is its own thing. It's a first person Metroid game. So yep. It's going to have the same item gated uh, exploration and adventure elements to it. Isolation. It's going to feel like Metroid, but it's going to be very different. And so what I'm kind of worried about is that people that, because Dread has just sold better than any Metroid ever, 
Um, I don't want people that cut their teeth with Metroid on Dread picking up Prime 4 thinking, oh, this is going to be another Dread. Right. It's not. It's going to be a very yeah. different game. It's going to be yeah. similar, but it's going to be a very different game. And I don't want those people to get turned off. And mm -hmm. because if Prime 4 doesn't sell well, Nintendo's very, they're a very numbers driven company, which they should be. They're a corporation. It is what it is. It's not just art. It's they're making money, right? Mm -hmm. If it doesn't sell well, it could be even longer before we see another Metroid game of any yeah. time. That's true. That is, is what true. happened with other yeah. M. It sucked. Right. It didn't sell and it sucked. And then, and then nothing. welcome to the desert. Right. Yeah. Thankfully, I, I feel like anybody who is coming from Dread um, and then goes to uh, a prime game done by Retro Studios would probably feel similar to somebody who played like Super Metroid and then played Prime. Yeah. where they would almost be delighted by how well everything was brought into 3D and how familiar everything can feel, yet still be its own totally unique beast. Mm -hmm. So in a funny way, maybe we'll see that kind of True. cycle yeah. playing out again, um, which would be the best case of things. Right. Um, yeah, totally get your concern though. Uh, Other M basically buried Metroid for, for a while. Um, which I think is partly kind of everybody's resentment about the game, despite the game and how just shit it was. Um, the fact that it, it just kind of nose planted the series for so long um, was really what stung. So, yeah. If you haven't yeah. watched it, um, there's a YouTuber that I really like. He doesn't do a whole lot of content, but what he does put out is pretty good quality. Mm -hmm. It's the Geek Critique. Hmm. And watch his, so I don't forget. watch his Metroid series. Uh, this is okay. like, like four years old at this yeah. point, but he went through the entire series and he did like these hour long critiques on each of the different Metroid games. And his, his hour long critique of Metroid Other Rim is just scathing and hysterical. <laughs> but because I've, I've, I've never played through the whole game. So, and I'm, I'm never going to. Yeah. But, so there were some things that I didn't make it far enough in the game to be like, oh, holy shit. I'm glad I didn't make it to that point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I peeled off too. Yeah, but it's but it's but it, but it's really good. Make make sure to give that one a watch at least. He's 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 got uh, nice. some good critiques on the uh, uh, Sonic series as well. Better cool. Watch yeah, it. yeah, I'll check that out later. We'll have to recircle on that. Yeah. Oh well, dude. Um, yeah, I think we uh, went pretty deep in it. Um, I feel like this could almost be like a two part episode. There's still so much to talk about <laughs> Metroid, but yeah, I'm stuff. sure we'll we'll return to the series. Uh, much more in the future as we go. Yeah. Um, and maybe maybe next time we do Mega Man? I don't know. Yeah, Let's next time out. Mega Man. So Mega Man. Yeah. I never stopped playing Mega Man games. I played Mega Man games all the goddamn time. Yeah, I can attest to that. You never you stopped. You don't. So, <laughs> so, so here, here is your challenge. We talked okay. about when we set these podcasts up that we're going to do challenges. Mm -hmm. And I know you yeah. really, really want to play more Metroid. Yeah. But getting good at a Mega Man game is going to make you better at Metroid. So Fair, fair. Pick a Mega Man game. Which Mega Man game do you want to play? So okay. think of think of either the mainline series mm -hmm. or the X series or yeah, let's 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 keep it easy. Pick pick a game from the mainline series or the X series. Okay. okay. One that you're not terribly familiar with. Um that's not X6. Okay. Um does Mega Man 11 count? I actually bought that one, but I never finished it. Totally counts. Okay um yeah if Unless, you play mm -hmm. if, if if that is your Mega Man game to choose i will say at least play just a little bit of an nes Mega Man game yeah to be able to adequately adequately critique 11 okay okay so like a little bit of two or three you don't have to beat them but just you know yeah. kind of get that feel and then jump into 11 Okay. But yeah. yeah. Let me let me give it a little bit of thought because there's also uh, the very first Mega Man game that I ever played was renting a Nintendo way back in the day, and sitting down with uh, a Mega Man Two cartridge, River City Ransom, and uh, Contra, and those were like kind of my little introduction to Nintendo at the time, mm -hmm. um, which was just amazing. Um, and I have never revisited Mega Man Two on my own all the way through since then so there's a part of me that also kind of wants to just go back to that childhood memory i mean uh, i'm not gonna complain <laughs> yeah yeah so i might i might do that one yeah yeah let me let me think on it a little bit but it'll be probably one of those two okay yeah 
All right, man. Well, I guess we should wrap it up um, and we'll do Mega Man next time. Um, and yeah, any, uh, any last minute things? I think we're pretty good. No, just everybody. Thanks for sticking around. Mm -hmm. and, go play uh, Dread. It's wonderful. Yeah, go play Dread. It's absolutely fantastic. If you were on the fence, hopefully we have steered you the other way. This has been we've been talking about this for an hour and 15 minutes and we have not gone into spoiler territory either. I'm pretty impressed with ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. You know what some amazing. of the late game items are, but that's it. You don't know what the story is or any of the yeah. plot twists. And we left probably the craziest plot twist from the middle of the game completely out. Yeah. Which we could talk about. So this yeah. is a I, I kind of free conversation. I'm pretty impressed. Yeah. I kind of maybe next episode we can we can just say you know put a little spoiler break yeah. from you know 15 minutes um because i do want to talk a little bit about some of the end of uh of dread yeah same, uh, the, the, same. there's so much good stuff there but anyway it's, it's, yeah it sets it up yeah yeah good. all right we'll tell next time adios right. bye everybody bye bye